<clears throat> All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So um, because I'm not seeing much homework coming in, um, I decided to, for tonight, to go ahead and just go over all the homework, um, you know, what, what's expected, uh, and also a um, couple things. One, I want to make sure everybody understands that that's, the homework is really the value in this class, isn't just sitting through, you know, lectures with me. I'm sure that's interesting and everything, but you got to practice this stuff. Um, otherwise, it just doesn't stick. Um, you know, the, going through a pipeline from beginning to end, um, you know, doing doing the coding yourself, uh, figuring out Python, whether it's taking lessons with Python um, on Python if you're if you need to come up to speed, or actually you know practicing, uh, you know, on a programming assignment. You know, that's where you're really going to learn it, learn this stuff. Um, I've got a hands up here. Uh, okay, how does that, okay, here we go, Vinath. Okay, you have a question, Vinath? Let's see, I think I can let you ask your question. I think you're on mute. Um, oh, I can unmute you. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. You hear me? Yeah, can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a you have a question? Oh, I don't have any questions. I was just confused with the homeworks and stuff as I was discussing with you. So it's better that you're walking through the homework. That's great. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Because I missed a few classes, so. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, so yeah, this will be good. Um, yeah. All right. So let's let's. Uh, I'll drop the hand. And we will continue. Okay. Um, all right, Fanny. Fanny, it looks like you. Okay, you, you're working on a Python Udemy course. That's good. All right, so um, let's look at, okay, the homework lecture one and lecture two, those are pretty much straightforward. Just get um, up and up to speed on GitHub and Python. Um, is anybody having problems with GitHub? Um, if I can, you can put something into the chat. I want to make sure everybody is is good there. Okay. Um, okay. So let me pull up. Okay. Improve on the Iris pipeline. That's the, the that was the main thing, and we talked about different things to do. And I got a lot of response on this one, so. Um, not going to uh, talk about this one, but if you if you haven't gotten it in, um, you know, please do so. Um, and if you have any questions about it whatsoever at any time, please reach out to me. A bunch of people have, and you know, I'm pretty pretty available. If not immediately, you know, definitely within an hour. Okay. So, all right, the neural network model. Um, let's go and let me pull that up. You know what we had before, and then let, we'll talk about what are the different things we can do to improve it. Uh, so give me a second here. Uh, and lecture four. Okay, we'll start. Okay, so graph the learning curve, show intensive playground, try adjusting hyperparameters. Um, okay, I'm gonna pull up the iris one because it doesn't seem like anything specific to the XOR model. Okay, so 
First thing is uh, show a loss curve. Um, okay, so as this trains, let's go down to our fifth function. Um, we have actually it, right here, this is the loss curve. So, um, so this is pretty much already done. Um, for the XOR model, it wasn't in there, but it is here for, for the iris model. So, okay, and let's show this in Tensor Playground. I don't know if any of you have actually played with Tensor Playground, um, but it's pretty cool. Let me pull it up. This really isn't specific to TensorFlow. Um, it's just a nice way of visualizing data sets. Okay. All right, so here it is. Uh, so different data sets, they, they really only have one data set here to look at. And this data set has two inputs, uh, four neurons in the hidden layer, and then two neurons in the output layer. And is it already trained? Learning rate, so let's train it. So you can see actually how these things are changing in the input and how our output is becoming, you know, more like our input. Uh, so I'm going to start it over again. So let's pause, start over. So our output is, you know, two by two and either one or zero. Um, so initially, you don't have the right uh, training pattern, but at toward the end, you get it. And here's the loss curve. It's um, getting tighter and tighter. So um, they only give you one data set here to work with. Uh, but I know there's a way to set this up so you can have uh, another data set. Um, you deal with different activation functions. So with a ReLU, it happens you know very quickly, much faster. So anyway, so that's um, some interesting stuff, you know, with TensorFlow play Playground. So different things to do, you know, try changing the hyperparameters. So what's the hyperparameter here? The main thing and the, hyper, the main hyperparameter is your ETA, um, your learning rate. Um, so just change that to, you know, point 0.1, point, you know, and then show how this changes, um, how the learning rate, learning curve changes, how much quickly, more quickly or slowly it converges. Um, okay, then hidden layers. Okay, this is more, much more complicated. Because this means adding another layer of weights um, and then calculating much more of these deltas. You know, you're, you're passing them back through. So that's probably the hardest part of this. Um, changing the number of hidden neurons. Okay, that's, you know, that's very, very easy. I say hidden equals 10, so change it to 5 and see what you get. Uh, and then other activation functions. You know, I've got like, the activation function plugged in here, sigmoid, change that to something else and see what you get. Um, okay, adding other hyperparameters. This is also very complicated. So if anybody does this, this is, this is gold, um, adding these in. And then um, they can functions fit, you know, and creating a class and methods and all that kind of thing. Um, that's, that's some good Python 
experience to do that. Uh, and then add hyperparameters once you've done that. Um, okay, so on the iris data set, on this one, when we go down and look at our error at the very end, our error, total error is 25, which shouldn't be, it should go down to zero. Um, if anybody, you know, if somebody needs to be able to explain that, you should, you should be able to explain that pretty simply. All the error is on the final, the, the, the class number two, where here's the real output, here's what the neural network is saying, and it's way off, even after training. Here's class number one, and it's pretty close. Class number zero is also pretty close. Um, and oh, also, okay, the next thing is to test and train only on, I mean, train only on a test, a train set, training set, and then do a test set. Um, so you can use the um, split the training set. Um, test, train, split. And use that to split up the data. Uh, the, you know, the input data it comes in from uh, this function, load iris. And then you have x and y, so you just need to split that. So shouldn't shouldn't be too complicated. All right. Give me a second here. Why is that still hold on? Okay. Um, okay. So, any questions about this this homework? Lecture four. Okay, no questions. I should, you know, based on people's, you know, schedule, you know, that you might have problems um, getting this, but, you know, we should, should be able to get this in by next week. Um, moving on next week, so we're going to have even more, more information, more homework. So um, the further you get behind, the harder it's going to be to catch up. Okay, so the next one was any regressions? Uh, so let me pull up that work we did. Let me close this one out. Lecture five. Okay, so we got two of them um, gradient descent and linear algebra. So let me pull up the linear algebra first. So the, home, the homework was make the plots similar add uh, error measurement. So right now the plots, one plot is like this, and let me pull the other one up. Gradient descent. This plot, py plots scatter, so how are they different? Okay, so the, the line is defined differently. So that should be pretty easy to do. This one's a much cleaner method. So we changed the linear model to, to be that way. Um, I'm sorry, the, the, line, the uh, linear algebra model. Okay, add the uh, mean squared error. Um, okay, I don't, I'm not showing error in this. So you, y minus predict y uh, squared, and then take the average of, of all of them. Should not be a problem. Um, okay, for gradient descent, graph the learning curve. Okay, we did a graph of learning curve before on iris. So you'll just add 
code like that. Um, change the learning rate. Um, okay, so and then expand this to the iris or another data set if you if you wish. Just like we did for the neural network, you know, we can do this for we can use iris the iris data set. And let's figure out how long it takes to run. Um, okay, then the same kind of things we talked about before, modularize the gradient descent version. And add a, and then add the train and test split. So it should be pretty straightforward. Okay, and lecture six, homework um, for logistic regression. Okay, we didn't do the precision recall and F1 score, so let's go back and let's pull that one up. All we did was calculate accuracy. Um, okay. Um, yeah, the rock plot, ROC plot, but we didn't actually calculate. Um, oh, the F1 score, right? We calculated F1 score. Oh, 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 confusion matrix, right. Okay, and okay, based on both of these calculated accuracy, then we did um. Okay, on this one, we didn't go beyond the accuracy, but we did the confusion matrix here. Um, and did we do an F1 score anywhere? Okay, if we didn't, then that's, you know, as part of figuring this out, part, part of the homework um, is, you know, what is the F1 score? What's the, you know, which is just, you know, it's like zero over 100, um, uh, you know, zero over, uh, here, zero over 50. So that should not be too difficult. Um, okay. And then on this page, okay, oh, wait, wait, hold on. Expand to other classification types, multinomial, multi-class. Okay, if we, if we did the, um, iris data set um, differently um, instead of just is it one flower or not you know one flower or not we if we create three outputs um, is it this flower is it this flower is it this floor then we have flower then we have a multi-class um, logistic regression problem multi-class classification so do all I, all three iris classes, um, and then ordinal classes. That means that our outputs like zero through nine. Okay, so I got a question. Um, can you talk about metric selection like ROC or PR curve? What is PR curve? Refresh my memory. Um, meanwhile, I'll talk about the ROC curve. So going back. Um, so ROC curve, here all we did was just plot it, which it's um, as you change the threshold, the threshold changes from zero over here down to one over here. How does um, the um, two different parameters on your um, confusion matrix, matrix change, which the, the different parameters are, take these two, add them together, take 21, the, the positives, um, positives correct, so 21 over 35, um, that's, it's going to be the, Ratio 
of that to the false positives. The true positives over the false positives are 29 over 29 plus 86. That's how you get that's how you get the confusion matrix. You just you change your threshold value. Um, and then um, do you, you see what see what your model, how accurate your model is, what your confusion matrix is. Um, okay, precision recall cur curve. Uh, I didn't look at that. Um, that isn't very popular. More popular is the ROC curve. Um, but the precision recall is a curve that involves, you know, how does precision and recall change as your, um, uh, as your threshold changes. Normally use a threshold of 0.5. Um, and that's the default for logistic regression. And not only is it the default, but you can't actually change it. Um, the only way that you can can change it is to calculate and can't do it there. Um, you get the um, model output before it goes through this. Um, oh no, it's not there. Let's see. I gotta go back. Hold on. Um, before you say, is it greater than my threshold? And that's a yes. If it's less than my threshold, it's a no. And it's this predict prob probability function that comes out of, it's part of the logistic regression model. Um, you run that and that gives, that doesn't give you a zero or one, it gives you the actual probability in the middle. So does that help Monique? Going through that again. Um, I mean, it's, it's extremely complex. So, you know, I don't, don't blame you if you didn't get it the first time. Sure. Uh, and it's something that, you know, you've got to, got to remember, got to keep that in mind as, as we, as, as you go and apply this later on and you will get questions on stuff like that, um, in interviews. So, uh, okay. So um, yeah, um, additional homework is you know use the MNIST data set, and you know do these um, do use logistic regression on that. Okay, so um, all right, and the last homework is if you pull up this ROC curve that's in this uh, this article here. So let's go down. Okay, this is an ROC curve. This isn't much of a curve, it should be rounded. And so the question is, why isn't, isn't it? What did they do wrong? Um, they actually have that a few more places in here. Yeah, here also, also an ROC curve that's just blown up. So, okay. So, the next thing I want to do um, after going through the homework, um, I want to show you guys a little project that I just did that's, to me, extremely cool. Um, I was actually, you know, showing everybody at work today. And everybody's like, oh, wow. Um, so, what, what this is, is taking reviews and pulling sentiment out of it, uh, doing a sentiment analysis. So like, uh, I think this, is this Amazon, I think this is Amazon reviews. Uh, so, and, and trying to determine whether that review is good for the product or saying the product is bad, um, which one. Um, so there's this website that's got, um, uh, a, uh, a data set on it um, that's got a whole bunch of Amazon um, reviews on it. And they've done some processing on it. Um, so let's take a look at what that data set looks like. 
Um, okay, so this is this is it. I'm going to open it with Notepad. Okay, so here's here's the data set. Okay, hold on a second here. Got something going on. Why is this? Okay, well, it's Give me a second. Okay, so I just pull it over a little bit. Okay, so each line has a different review on it. Uh, and at the end of the review is a label. You can see it's label uh, 1. 1. 1.0 or a 1. And that's the number of stars that this um that this that they gave this product with this review and here is the, the text of the review um, and notice there's some stuff in here that i'm not sure this is part of the data set um, they did some work on it processing on it and said how many um uh, how many times did this show up uh did this text show up in this review uh, like inconvenient and showed up one time um, and also they have these in um, two words together with an underscore. Uh, so what we're going to do is clear that all out. We're going to get rid of it and end up with kind of the, the original data set, original review. So as you can see on row two, if I go to the end, it's got a, it also had a 1.0. Uh, this one had a 4.0 review. This one had 2.0 review. So, all right, so this is our data set. Uh, and this, I have underscore E because it's the electronics data. Um, so let's go to the code. I'm just gonna walk you through my uh, Python code here that I threw together for, um, for doing this. Okay, and I need to change this name to dot. E or uh, dot E, right? Underscore E. Okay. All right. So, first thing I do is load in my libraries. Then I'm going to read in and fill out this reviews uh, array with everything that's in that review, in, the, in that file. So it's going to give me a bunch of reviews. And it takes a minute. Has to, my computer has to wake up again. What I'll do is I'll show you what reviews zero looks like. Okay, it's going to load it again faster this time. Ooh, I got to type this right. Let me see if I can stop it. Try it again. Okay. Okay, so you can see this is that first one with a colon uh, 1.0 at the end. Okay, with quotes around it. So that's the, the, the first one. So let me delete that back out. All right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to break this line apart into two pieces, two different arrays. One's going to be the text part of the array, and the other one's going to be this label at the end, the, the rating. Um, so, you know, I'm looping through review and reviews. I'm looking for this pound label pound uh, with this find iter. Um, and uh, this is with the regex. Uh, library uh, of commands. Um, and, you know, what I'm ending up with, I'm appending to the text, everything that's before that, you know, that label and everything that's after, or everything I found, I'm putting into this rate underscore text. So if I take a look now, well, 
let me stop it because I want I want to when I'm done show you what's in here. So I say text zero. So print text zero and print rate text zero. Okay, so text is zero and, and I'll split this out. I've got text being this part and then the rate zero being that part. Um, so the next thing I need to do, I, I wanna do is take this, uh, take this part, the, the rate text that got out of there. Let me go ahead and delete that. Uh, and say, okay, I only want this piece of it you know, that's rate eight to nine is that one spot. Um, I wanna say if it's greater than three, okay, um, then give it a, let it be one. If it's less than three or three or less, let it be a zero. So in other words, it's good if I get a four or five, it's bad I get it, if I get zero, three, four, five, one, one to three. Um, so let's let this run. And let's see what ratings looks like. Okay, see now I have this array of zeros and ones. This is what I'm going to train on. That's, that's my target, my output. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to do, now see, I, have, I, I want to get rid of all these word counts. Just take them out because I don't care. Um, I, there's probably additional information in them. Like if wrong adapter is in there twice, okay, that with a two, then sure. That might mean it's worse than if it just is in there once. But for my purposes this time, I'm just gonna take them out. So um, I created a function to, uh, when I pass in a, uh, a text, you know, a, a string, I look for a colon with a number uh, decimal number, I look for that, and then uh, collapse it, collapse the text without it. So I do that in a loop for every one of those that I find, and that's the function. So then for every line um, in my text, I am filling up this clean text. I'm appending the output of that function to uh, clean text. So let's look at what clean text looks like afterwards. Oops, I ran it. Text. Let's look at the, the first one because if we look at all of them, it just is too much. Okay, so that's very good. I got rid of all of those colon and numbers. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of all the bad characters in here. The slashes, the quotes. This is all the kind of stuff you have to do to text um, text before you can train on it when you're doing NLP, uh, natural language processing. You gotta do this pre-processing on your data. So we're just kind of going through it piece by piece. So what I'm gonna do is look for these things. This is a regex um, string. I'm gonna look for these and replace them with just take them out if it's any of these, like a period or a semicolon. All right, got a here. Oh, thanks, Monique. Um, so, uh, so what what I'm doing is I'm taking out all of these, and I'm also taking out this, you know, these things. Um, there's a lot of just ugly stuff. I'm also going to take out the underscores so that I'm separating these back out um, to individual lines. So running this, um, I created a function um, for every review, I, I do this uh, replace with space, replace no space. And then, um, you know, basically I'm uh, doing this pre-process reviews and that's what's removing all that. So let's look at what it looks like when it's all done. Reviews, clean, zero. OK. 
Okay. All right, so much cleaner. All right, so this is, this is what I'm actually going to train on. Actually, it's not. I said that, I, I, I lied. There's one more thing I'm gonna do. And we can show that this gives us a tiny bit more accuracy if we do this. Um, we're we're gonna do, run a port stemmer on this. We're gonna do some lemmatization. So anytime you have a word like, uh, where's a good word, reviews. Okay, we're gonna get rid of the S on it because the S really doesn't give us much additional meaning. We can, if we just do it with review, we'd be fine and we'd have a simpler problem. Assumed, I'm gonna get rid of the, actually I'm gonna get rid of both the D and the E because that's what the, um, the stem of that word is. Recommended uh, will be recommend. Um, so this is, so what I need is this uh, port stemmer, uh, piece out of the NLTK library, natural language, uh, I forget TK, but it's natural language processing. It's a lot of um, stuff related to that in there. Uh, so, so what I'm doing, um, okay, why am I removing ED, any specific reason? Uh, to, to make my model simpler, it's really, really the bottom line. Um, to, to give me less words in this uh, this um, set of of words, the total words, because I'm getting ready to take every unique word that's in this corpus, you know, in this set of reviews, all the reviews, and I'm going to create one column for every one of those unique words, and that's actually the next step. Um, and, and I'm going to either put a one or a zero in each one of those columns, depending on whether that word was in this. So you can imagine there's many, many words. So if we, um, if we can cut this down some without losing information, then um, it makes sense to do that. Okay, so recommend and recommended and recommendation all convert to recommend. Yes, that is exactly true. Um, that's that's the finding the stem and just going with the stem. They all mean basically the same thing um, as far as the overall meaning of this corporate this this review. So we could drop all of that additional stuff. Um, it wouldn't necessarily many wouldn't necessarily make sense if we did that, um, but it it. You know, we're not really trying to make sense. We're just trying to get a feel for this, whether it's a positive or negative. So the meaning is in the stem. Um, making sense that we can read it, it's different. Okay. So good, good, good questions. Um, okay, so what I'm doing is uh, for every word in reviews, Split, which reviews.split takes one of these reviews and breaks it up into a, an array of words. So for every word, I am returning the stem of that word and an additional space so that I can then join it all back together when I'm all done. Uh -huh. So let's take a look at what this looks like after we're done. Oops. One backspace. Okay, so reviews, clean, and stemmed is what our final output's going to be. So let's stop it, start it over. Okay. While that's running, let's talk about the next one, um, which is the vectorizer. Okay, we're going to. This is this is the part that breaks 
each one of these rows up into a bunch of columns. It does the bag of words uh, type of encoding. Um, takes all the words, throws them into a bag, and each um, each row is going to have one in every column that has that word. Um, so, um, and it's also called one hot encoding, uh, which you've heard that with, um, like for instance, uh, the nu num numerical, um, uh, the eminence, you know, if we're going to guess zero through nine, you know, we're going to come up with uh, nine binary outputs, uh, you know, 10 binary outputs for zero through nine. First one represents zero, the last one represents a nine. It was the same thing with this. So, um, okay, so here's what it looks like after stemming. Um, second here. Come on. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, we can get rid of common world words, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, I didn't do that this time. That probably would help, but um, I didn't do that. That'll be part of the homework. Uh, so, like, inconvenient became inconvenient. Uh, what else came out weird? Reviewers became review. So it just really just simplified everything. Um, okay, so it took the S's off a lot of words, like the, this became the. So it isn't that great of a stemmer. There are other stemmers that are better. Um, this one's the Porter stemmer. So, um, okay, so based on, you know, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this count vectorizer this is what our input is, and our output is going to be this x. And it's uh, we're going to fit and transform and come up with this this huge x. And this is what it looks like. Uh, it's 5901 records, rows. That's how many in our training set, our uh, our our total corpus, I should say. It's not our training set. And 19, uh, 19,542, that's how many words there were altogether. So that's how far across this goes. And then 9 down. And you can see there's no ones because it's somewhere here in the middle. I just kind of showed what that uh, looks like, the X. Um, okay. So the next thing is to split this data set. We now have here's our input our our output was the the uh reviews up here somewhere our ratings sorry um so we're now going to split it into training and test set and we're going to use 75 percent for the training set 25 percent for the test set so x train x test y train y test x is the input ratings is the output I'm setting it to random state equals one so that I'm consistent every time I do this because it randomizes in there. Um, so run that. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my training data, okay, and break that and do kind of like a cross validation, but not exactly. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna evaluate different um, hyperparameters of the logistic regression. That's the model we're gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna do 0.01 for C all the way up to one. So uh, what I'm gonna do is for C in all of that, I'm going to fit on 75% of my training data and then test on the validation. So I'm doing some validation on my training on my training data to see if I can get the best kind of model to use. Uh, so I'm going to try each one of these. I'm going to fit on 
the training of within my training set and then calculate my accuracy based on the validation set I predict based on the x compared to the y and use my accuracy score so let's run this i end up with about an 82 to 85 percent accuracy well that's pretty cool so i'm be, being able to guess 85 percent of the time whether this was a an actual positive or negative review so we got a question um should i use any other metric besides accuracy uh i don't know that's just, accuracy is just the most common i mean we have the um you know confusion matrix and all of that um and we have one output so yeah we could we could look at those false positives, uh, positive negative, uh, false negatives. Um, how important is it that we make sure we get all positives, uh, not miss any? You know, that's this interesting question. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll think about that. Um, but yeah, all I did was just accuracy. Okay, so, um, the one that had the highest accuracy was the C equals one. That gave me an 84.5, 84.6% accuracy. So I'm going to do my final model with the training, that all the training data, and then test it on the test data. So let's run this. Ended up with 84.4 um, accuracy. Okay, I'm getting, oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you, Monique. Uh, so we should put that in here so we can get the actual best. I run it with 0.25, I got 85.2 accuracy. So that's pretty cool. Um, now some interesting things we can do with logistic regression, with, with linear regression, logistic regression. Remember those are, uh, y equals mx plus b in there, you know, that there's a slope, you know, each feature, which is each word um, in the corpus, uh, in the dictionary, um, each word is given a, a rate, going to be a given a rating, you know, could be going to be given a, um, you know, a factor that is multiplied by in order to feed into the output. Um, so, whichever one of those is going to have a positive number, um, it's going to contribute positively to the output. If any of those have a negative number, it's going to contribute negatively to the output. So basically, the ones that contribute positively to the output are going to be positive words. The ones that contribute negatively to the output are going to be negative words. So what I'm going to do is take all the coefficients um out of the feature out, out of the uh, the model and um put them in order i'm going to sort them take the top 15 and let's see what we get i got great i got easy probably easier or something like that excel good little and little is kind of a weird one price well perfect so whenever these words were in the rating that gave it a more positive output that's pretty nice kind of interesting that it pulled out all the positive words and then the negative words not return poor disappoint so these are all the negative words if they ever if they said this in the rating probably they were giving a negative rating so that's pretty slick if you ask me I mean, just how, how with logistic regression, we ended up with English, understanding, you know, a sentiment. We got a feeling for this, um, this data, uh, pulled out feeling words. So it's just, it's interesting. So what I did, um, somebody at work challenged me to 
Okay, so fine. You were able to um, train on that data. Why don't you use your same model and run it on a completely other set of reviews? And are you able to, you know, get a decent percentage? So I, I, uh, in this data set, um, there was also a review. This was a review of electronics that we did. There's also a, re a review of kitchen stuff. This file, all balanced review, um, it's kitchen stuff. So I loaded that one in, uh, called it test reviews. Here's an example of one. Um, so something with chocolate and grandchildren, chocolate fountain, okay, interesting. Um, so what I did was uh, clean this up, just like I cleaned up the other one, split it between the words and the label, uh, got the label out, or got the, got, you know, got the actual rating out of this, you know, whether it was good or bad, same way I did before. Um, I removed the counts out of it, used that function that I created up, up above. And I cleaned out the text, got rid of all the underscores and all of that. Um, then I did the stemming here to it, same thing. Then I did, um, I converted this to the one hot encoding um, and used that same CV that I created up above um, and just did a transform. To, on that data after it stemmed, I, I did a transform and that gave me this X test. And I said X test final, like, you know, to give it, to make it different than the other X tests. And it turns out I've got 5,000 reviews in this one, same number of columns, I hope, because I used the same transform. Um, and then I did a, I, I used the final model that I had up before I did a predict on the X and compared it to the ratings and I got like 83%. So it works on data it hasn't seen yet at all, you know, relatively, relatively well it works. So that's, that's basically what I wanted to show you. Um, one thing in here, somehow I skipped over. Uh, okay. Yeah, here's, here's what I skipped over and I'm not sure which one I did. Um, okay, there's two types of vectorizers. This count vectorizer gives me a one in, in my huge array um, whenever I've got one of the, got one of the words. Um, there's also this TF-IDF vectorizer that it doesn't do a count uh, per se whenever those words show up. It, it gives it an importance of the word. Um, and there's a way to calculate that importance. Um, it's called TF-IDF. And what it is, is like if a word is in every uh, rating, you know, every um, review, like say the, you know, is in every review, then what it does is it doesn't give it a full one whenever it shows up in a review. It gives it a very low number, uh, like a 0 .0001. If, if it's a unique word in that review, then it gives it a much higher uh, rating. Uh, and there's, that's kind of the overall gist of how TF-IDF works. Um, there's, a, there's some formulas um, out there. Um, that I, you know, when I clean this up and put it out on the uh, out on my GitHub uh, for you guys to look at, um, I will add that in, and you'll need that in order to do you know the homework on this. Um, and I'll I will also write up the homework um, for this. But uh, basically, let's see for the homework. Uh, first thing will be to remove. You know, stop words is what what they're usually called. Um, like the ands, that the you know take stuff like that out. Um, do it on your own data set. That would be another 
another homework, another piece of homework. And if you know how um, to get data off the internet um, to scrape data, um, then that would be a great, uh, a good thing to, a good application for this. Get reviews from some site. Um, okay. Another thing is to use this word count. Um, you know, these, use these word counts, include them in the model and see if you get any additional boost. A um, couple more uh, percentage points, maybe. Um, let me think. I will think about any other questions, any, any other things that, I, that, that you guys can do with this. But, um, but yeah, I know this is not the, the full hour and a half. Um, next week will definitely be that, um, going over trees. Um, and um, let me think, uh, you know, boosted trees, all the different types, you know, of trees. So uh, how, to, how to derive them. Um, and also, you know, how to use them, um, why you use them, um, stuff like that. So we're going to, and also, uh, if, if there's time, I'm also going to talk about um, EDA. Um, you know, different things you can do with EDA. What are, what are the different steps um, that, that you have to make sure you look at? Um, so I got a question. Recommend some sources that are good for showing wet scraping and getting the data. I will look up some stuff um, and include that in the homework. Um, yes, I've come across several of those. Um, I forget the library that you use um, for that, but uh, but yeah, there's there's definitely some good examples out there. So I will um, I'll include that. So uh, any other questions? Uh, please let me know. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, get this up there in GitHub shortly. And uh, yeah, be beautiful soup. Yes, thank you, Avesh. That's what it's called. Um, but yeah, the, those coefficients, that, that makes too, way too much sense. It's just kind of freaky to me that, you know, with logistic regression, we're able to pull meaning out of these, out of these paragraphs um, but uh, anyway all right well appreciate it guys uh, let me know if there's any questions meanwhile I'm just gonna stop the video and move on from there thanks